No worries. <laughs> and um, thanks for joining, Krishma. Um, to everybody, this is uh, Local Connect, uh, where we are doing the Northern Beaches series of getting to know your local small businesses. So um, we have Krishma um, from Golden Life. Yeah. And, um, yeah, um, do you want to uh, say hi and, and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started Soulful Hikes? Oh, yeah, sure. So um, my business is called Soulful Hikes, and um, we are actually not totally launched. We were about going to launch this month, but uh, because of COVID, we've delayed the launch. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that we can launch uh, next month once lockdown is over. So just taking it in a positive light and getting all the back-end stuff and launch stuff ready to go. Just to give you an idea on what we do, so we actually offer hikes of, um, to various kind of diverse kind of audiences. So we've got um, different kinds of hikes like uh, women's only hikes, kid-friendly hikes, uh, mentor hikes, experience hikes, and we also got um, other hikes like corporate hikes and private hikes as well. So that kind of caters to a wide variety of audiences, right from, uh, you know, could be moms to corporates, singles, professionals, obviously kids. And um, so it's a wide variety. And how I got started, that's a good question. Um, so basically, I've just been hiking a lot in the last one year, and I realized I was really enjoying it. And um, I, I didn't want to go back to corporate life. So I was anyway planning to start a business on my own. And that's when the idea clicked that why not? you know, do a business in something you're really passionate about. It always works better when you, um, you know, pursue something that you're really passionate about. And I, I started hiking and um, I didn't, I think it's not really safe anyway to go hiking alone. So that's the reason I actually kind of started and set up a community of girls initially. So we were about 100, 200 girls that I kind of set up a WhatsApp group oh, wow. every weekend. Like we wouldn't miss a single weekend. There were days where we would go Saturday and Sunday and cover like different parts of Sydney. And I got like a lot of positive feedback because there were people who kind of told me, oh, you know what, this was like in my backyard and I didn't know this for like 10 years or 20 years. And I'm like, wow. So it was a great way to kind of explore the city and see everything that Sydney had to offer. And another positive for me to kind of get started was when people actually came to me and said, you know what, because I got onto these hikes, it really helped me um, in a very difficult phase of life, like somebody may have lost their parent or may have lost a job or unemployed at the moment or going through a separation or different, different reasons. They actually mentioned to me that it really helped them kind of open up, connect to people and yeah. um, kind of just get outside of their shell and, um, you know, look at life in a different way and perspective. And it helped their mental health and physical health, obviously, but mental health was a big one as well. So that kind of um, gave me that assurance, you know, that it's a great way to um, contribute to the community. And that was another reason kind of getting into the push where why not do this as a business and kind of do this, um, you know, more at a more full-fledged way. So that oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I personally love walking and, and hiking as well. So, um, yeah, and I don't, uh, I generally don't like to go on my own. <laughs> so it's probably a good way uh, to meet people as well. Uh, yeah. Definitely for, um, yeah, if you like, you know, just a single woman or just like a woman who got, kind of wants to go on your own but wants to hang out with some other gals um, and yeah. have a bit of a laugh. I mean, that's quite a lot of um, uh, uh, people to join your your first initial crew so yeah. <laughs> um myself i initially and i put out a post i thought two or three people would be interested but then i got this massive uh i think at, by the end of it we were nearly at 500 girls and i stopped taking more people uh because okay. the whatsapp group, group just grew but i thought that was like a good indication that there are so many people out there who want to connect and get outdoors yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so, what's a typical typical hike in a group? Like, how how, how would it go um, in the morning? What time does it start? That kind of thing. Uh, sure. So, I kind of uh, lean more towards slightly later start, maybe like ten thirty or so. So, if that way, even moms who kind of have to do school drop offs or anything, kind of, it's a good timing. It's not too early, not too late. So, maybe around ten ten thirty is when we would start. So it's during the week as well. Yeah. So like, we have on weekdays okay. as well as weekends. So that way okay. we won't kind of all audiences so weekdays you have other people that are that can come in whether it could be a state of moms or professionals who might be working part-time or um, you know very
hike, we try to keep the numbers limited. So I'm planning to just keep it to like 15 people mostly. So we are more in line with the um, um, environmental policy as well as leave no trace policy. We want to keep the destinations as natural in their character and their cultural diversity. So that was the main idea. And also the experience of the crowd is always better when um, there are lesser people. So there's more um, more opportunities to interact with uh, you know each other as opposed to when it's a really big group where sometimes people can just feel a bit lost um, due to the big numbers. Yeah. Yeah, and um, okay, so so variety of times then, or or is it generally the same time or uh, it's before past? the same time? But the day obviously could be different, and we also um, we also kind of try and cater to a variety of audience because most of the other competitors are actually doing really long hikes, could be like four hours, five hours, where you need to dedicate an entire day. So I saw a lot of, um, um, you know, I saw an audience which was kind of mentioning to me that, you know what, I don't have the fitness for that long a hike. I don't have mm. the time. I'm time poor. Or maybe, I, you know, I've not hiked or walked in such a long time. So I can't straight away go on a four or five hour hike. I want to start yeah. really small and I want to be able to squeeze it in my day where I finish the hike. I come back. I can still do all my other stuff that I want to do. So I saw a lot of people um, giving me that kind of a feedback. And that's why I kind of... Um, wanted to bring to the market heights which are not necessarily meant for the really fit people, but mm -hmm. more for somebody, you know, kind of going from the couch to getting outdoors. So most of the hikes would be like two hours, could be two and a half hours. The kids one might be even one hour. So it gives people the opportunity okay. to kind of get on a hike, even if they are not like super fit or, you know, moderately fit. You can even get in if you're kind of on your starting journey to getting healthy and fit. Okay. Yeah. No. That's good. Um. Yeah. I am. Um, I, I. I think I'm more, probably more the the two hour, <laughs> two and a half hours because you you get hungry as well. You know. Yeah. And then, like you say, you probably don't want to have too much food along the way because then there's a lot of rubbish that you kind of have to cl clean up and and yeah. keep on you. Yeah, that's true. But in in saying that, we do like to make it as an experience as well. So okay. on some hikes, it's just the hike. But on some of the ones. Uh, we kind of do a picnic lunch, which we carry with us. So if you see a nice oh. spot, yeah, if you see a beautiful spot, you don't want to be like, oh my gosh, you know, I wish I had carried something and I wish we could have lunch here. So we kind of take our lunch with us. So if we spot something really pretty and, um, you know, beautiful, be like an ocean or maybe an, somewhere nice in the bush, then we can we just sit down there and either have a morning tea or a lunch. But we do okay. encourage people to carry more eco-friendly stuff when it comes to their food and water choices. So that's one thing, kind of keeping in mind, uh, you know, minimum impact to the environment kind of thing. So that's mm -hmm. all. But um, it's always more an experience. So there are, we can, we do like casual picnics, but we also do pop-up picnics, which is like the entire glamorous setup with a long table and you have all your, you know, fancy cutlery and tableware and you okay. could be doing a picnic on some stunning location, like either by the harbor or maybe a beach or somewhere in the bush. So we try to um, kind of focus more on the experience as opposed to just doing the hike, getting there, getting your kilometers, you know, getting yeah. your distance and just come back. So it's more about enjoying the nature, taking those photos, connecting to each other and having an experience rather than just getting your dose of one hour or two hour of exercise in. Yeah, so it's like um, it's like the pub crawls that they do, the walking pub crawls, but except it's in the bush, <laughs> so you can stop and have your your um, picnics and stuff like that. Yeah, and and to be honest, um, it's it's good that you you know where to take people, so you are you know guide people because I wouldn't have anywhere, I wouldn't have a clue like where to go. But I know that there's some beautiful um, hikes that I've basically just stumbled across literally <laughs> by just going on a quick walk. So um, tell me a little bit more about the kind of locations that you do as well. Sure. So with the locations, we kind of try to keep a bit of um, balance and a good diversity. So it could be something um, along the coast. So Sydney has got an amazing coastline. And of course, mm -hmm. there's a harbour as well. So we do a lot in the northern beaches, could be like Manly, Narrabin, uh, Collaroy, you know, DY, that side of town. But there's also stuff on... Um, you know, the other side of town, which could be the suburbs, like maybe Parramatta Lake or um, could be more of the, you know, the mini pockets of reserves that we have um, in Sydney. Sydney, that way, we're really lucky that we have so many um, pockets of reserve which are so accessible. So it could be something in Hornsby or the Hills District or Parramatta 
So kind of a wide variety. And okay. um, length is again varied as well. It could be something as short as, you know, like I said, one and a half hour to get, can go to two and a half hours as well. And what I like about it is also a mixture of things. So you're not only doing a hike. You can do a hike and you can do a picnic or you can hike and paint or hike and sip or hike and maybe go on a winery or a brewery, urban brewery. So it kind of mixes it up a bit or maybe do a hike and a yoga session or a Pilates session or even meditation session. So it kind of combines things. So you kind of keep it a bit more interesting as well. And you kind of introduce a bit more of the mindfulness and the soul, the activity as well. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so it's, not a, it's not a kind of a cookie-cutter um, program that you've got. You've got unique for all different walks of life, which is fantastic. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what I like about the whole thing that you, uh, and especially with the private hikes, like let's say you want to do a birthday, you don't necessarily just do the hike. You can choose which, which activity you want to kind of tie up with the hike. Okay. So that gives it, makes it, um, you know, more unique to yourself as to what your interests are. So Okay. That's the idea. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so and and how does how does co you mentioned before in the beginning? You know, COVID's kind of delayed you a little bit. So how has that impacted? Um, obviously, the the restrictions that that are in place at the moment and before. Yeah. So with COVID, I mean, I had actually um, decided to launch this month, ideally, but because of COVID, just kind of pushing it out now. So I'm just trying to get as much, you know, back-end stuff done and maybe get all the hikes planned out. So just trying to do more of the admin side of things uh, so that, that way when the restrictions do ease and the lockdown is over, bang, we can, you know, start kind of uh, slotting in as many hikes as possible. So, so far we've taken it okay, to be honest, but I just hope that, um, you know, the lockdown doesn't extend any yeah. more further than next month. So keeping our fingers and toes crossed there. <laughs> yeah, and you probably, um, you know, like when when the COVID and lockdowns happened last year, you know, people I don't think automatically, for example, thought about booking accommodation in their local state and that kind of thing. But then all of a sudden, it was just all booked out. So maybe maybe it's a case of they can book in with you in the future yeah. <laughs> and get your booking system up to scratch, and then and then you know. You know, you could always have them booked out for a certain period of time in the future where hopefully everything settles down a little bit. Yeah, that's the plan. So now I'm thinking maybe just kind of uh, future schedule some events for maybe September. So mm -hmm. that way we'll also have something to look forward to that way. It's like right now we are in lockdown time. But if they have something in the calendar that they're going to be kind of doing these, these hikes, it gives something to look forward to as well for them. Yeah, so, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then what about, um, so, so if somebody, so if they can, so the, the people that you've used already and, and that you've kind of been um, guarding already, um, yeah. are they going to be kind of helping out or carrying on almost like a, like a club or is it, um, or is it something that people can just sign up and do once? Yeah, they can just sign up and do one. So there's no memberships or anything at the moment, which kind of keeps it more open to everyone. So even if you're just a casual hiker and you would just want to do it just a one hike, that that's okay as well. And that's, I think that also would attract tourists. Obviously, right now we are in, um, you know, with the borders closed, but once the borders open and, you know, tourists come in and they just want to do that one hike to explore Sydney a bit better, that kind of gives them that option as well then. Yeah, and um, how do you how do you find like tapping into the the kind of um, the the real um, hikers that may be coming from different states? Because I know, like for example, Tasmania is like a big place to go hiking, and and yeah, um, yeah. lots of people go there. But um, they have you kind of have to sign up, or or you can't want to sign up to to a similar kind of company like yours, where you get a guided tour rather than just going on your own on the mountain. Um, so like how how does it work for you guys? Do you kind of give them a map before or, you know? Uh, in uh, we normally have, because it's a smaller group, it's easier to kind of keep track of people as well. And we use like the All Trails app, which is more like a phone app a lot. So that kind of... Okay. Uh, it handy and some of the hikes obviously they have all it's signposted as well but most of the time the main thing is that the group has to be together so we make sure that um, we kind of do a safety briefing in the beginning where everybody's 
people that you know they need to be in the vision of the leader and not to kind of um, go ahead because sometimes you know it may be just that they're so excited that they want to kind of lead up fast but we take safety really very seriously so that's like we yeah. go through some of the um, some of the checklists as to what one needs to do when we are in the hike just to kind of make sure that everybody's safety is ensured and you know it's a given that we have I, i'll have the first aid kit so it's first aid qualifications are there plus it's fully insured so i kind of go through a few things and um, also in terms of um, you know that they can take a photo or they can you know chit chat but always make sure that they're in the vision of the group so mm-hmm. we can kind of take steps and if if anything um, if there's any um, you know let's say the road is uneven or anything kind of just kind of give them a bit of a um, little bit of a brief up as to what the track is going to be like and another thing which we encourage is if anybody kind of has any health condition or anything like to just reach out and let me know before the hike that maybe they are a little slow in pace or whatever their issues are yeah. like kind of reach out so that way everybody is aware of things and we can take the right precautions accordingly yeah okay awesome um and then are you Krishma are you the are you the guide or is there someone else helping you So currently I'm the owner and the creator and I also do the guides uh, and I wanted to keep it this way for some time because um I want to kind of follow my passion as well at the, because I've yeah. seen some you end up doing something but then you end up getting stuck more you know on the back end side of things or the admin side of things where you don't actually end up getting out as much even though you started yeah. with that intention. so I want to kind of keep that soul and soul of the company that I I still get out and I still do all the uh, tours myself but maybe later down the line i might be kind of looking once i expand and grow i might be looking at getting a few more hiking guides uh, on board yeah you never know you might have interest in all parts of sydney yeah. <laughs> and you uh, can't be two two places at once so uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's fantastic to grow and and really put your your passion into into something yourself so um yeah. and are you uh, you're okay with snakes <laughs> Oh yeah that's a big one isn't it luckily because we do more of the urban um, urban hikes obviously the possibilities are less but still yes in in the first aid would we would cover the snake bites as well as to yeah. how the snake bites thing so uh, luckily because we are more in urban though so the possibilities are much lower though like for example yeah. of course we don't have that as much but still yeah it's always best to still be 100% well prepared yeah because- Yeah um I actually haven't I've I've probably seen like you know one snake in my whole time in, in yeah. you know 11 years in Australia of going hiking and walking so they're actually not as I guess prominent as you think that they would be you know just yeah. kind of slithering around although I know that there's a lot of people that's the first thing they go is oh do you want to go on a walk in the bush and they go oh no the snakes are spies but you never see yeah. them anyway <laughs> I think and once you get people on the hike first time that's when maybe the block kind of you know comes out that okay maybe it's not as uh, risky or as um, you know the mind blocks kind of can maybe come out then once they go first time that's Yeah all. yeah that's awesome um and yeah I suppose um what's great about sulfur hikes is is it's similar to like the park runs I don't know if you've heard of park run where they you know that there's ones all over the place but I mean at the end of the day like if you don't really want to run on your own you've got the opportunity to go and run with a whole bunch of other people and it's a great way to meet people if you're new to Sydney for example new for yeah. the north and, and you enjoy walking it's it's good to go and um yeah exactly so especially i really love hiking i love the outdoors but none of my friends had a similar interest and that was the thing yeah. like you know, find your tribe to kind of get into um, yeah. in the and kind of just get your cry a tribe um happening so i think i felt that with a lot of people where they wanted to go on but none of their friends or family were really interested in the outdoors or into exercise as much maybe they were more interested in the coffees or the dining and they felt that they were doing those things but there was something more they wanted to do So I think that's really important and another aspect is also for the kids because I see you know that's the reason I actually wanted to introduce the kids hikes mm-hmm. and there's really very anybody in the market currently in Sydney doing it and I feel that um, you know these days with all the devices and the app, the iP- uh, iPads and the mobiles and the TV screen kids are not being as physically active that they should be and I felt this was a great way to kind of yeah. you know kids out, outdoors get them into you know get get them to have some fresh air some sunlight and um, get them more active which is obviously very good for their health so definitely that's a key one yeah yeah definitely 
<laughs> and it's a it's a like family fun thing to do uh, go yeah. with your kids um, and do you have kids uh, yes I've got two girls they're just like we're gonna be five and three and that's one thing I take them okay. out or on bushwalks, on uh, always outdoors, like they are not much at home. They actually don't watch much iPad or mobile or anything. So that's something I would love to encourage, you know, well, to kind of get outdoors more and do things. So even my three year, like my two and a half year old was still doing like the 45 minute one hour hike with me. So I kind of, kind of want to encourage them more and get them outdoors more and kind of show them different parts of Sydney as well by doing that. And in saying that, it's also a great way for mums to connect because when you go on a kid's hikes, obviously the mums also get an opportunity yeah. to honor each other and kind of, um, you know, get on to similar kind of activities. So mm. that's a good point. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and then so so how can people engage with you in the meantime? So we've got your um, your Instagram, Soulful Hikes, yeah. and then you've got the, is it just Soulful Hikes at your Facebook as well? Yeah, so I think the Facebook is on Soulful Hikes and there's also a Facebook group called Soulful Hikers. So that way we can kind of communicate more. People can put up photos there and the interactions can be a bit more. And my okay. website is uh, www.soulfulhikes.com.au, which is mostly coming live next uh, next week, I'm hoping, next week or the following one. So that way people can jump on. But it's just that the hikes are not listed there. I'm just waiting to get a little bit more clarity on you know when the lockdown would get over and once we have that slight clarity i'm planning to just put in the hikes there so people can start booking in but yeah. for now yeah, we have these um uh, three platforms so people can connect and kind of um, reach out to each other as well so. yeah so um so yeah so if, um they can follow you and then find out when you have your first first hike yeah. when you're out of lockdown yeah. And join the groups as well and start kind of, I guess, chatting about it on the on the groups if you've got yeah, this whole part. Kind of, you know, just check on each other, how each other is doing in lockdown. I think it's a good way to still connect to the community just to yeah. ensure he's kind of coping all right with lockdown and uh, sometimes, you know, just put in some inspirational quotes out there and just reach out to each other in case yeah. anybody's um, kind of going, um, going through a tough time. Yeah. So, yeah. No, Community feeling is definitely really important in this whole thing. Yeah, and it's and it's really good for kind of the mental health side of things as well. You know, yeah. definitely yeah. of uh, nature and uh, <laughs> seeing yeah. the beautiful the beautiful landscapes of Australia definitely does um, yeah. ease exactly. the mind a little bit away from the laptops and the, and the screen time. So no, um, yeah. so I'll um, I'll put all the information in the 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 notes for this and um yeah i'll upload it onto the youtube channel as well for those who are interested in sharing so um no it was lovely uh chatting to you charisma and uh finding out about soulful hikes and uh definitely get some people to sign up and uh when this uh, horrible lockdown ends <laughs> yeah so well, best of luck for your business thank you so much and in the meantime yeah i just encourage people to get outdoors even if it's 15 minutes it definitely yeah. does for your mental keep those steps up <laughs> yeah and if you can't really meet each other just try and get on a solo walk just go or even if it's just around the block it's really helpful so thank you so much Tamara. i really appreciate your time and you know just yeah, really no opportunity to come on to this podcast thank you so much i really appreciate your time and effort thank you no i appreciate you coming on thanks everyone and um yeah see you soon stay safe cheers, cheers. bye